for joining us today. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Izuyun in Seoul. Let's get started with a look at the day's highlights. Korean exports surged by double digits for the first time in four years, but the country's manufacturing activity contracts for a sixth straight month. For many Koreans, their income growth is falling far short of the rapidly rising prices of daily necessities. So how is the Korean government tackling this? These stories are more coming right up. But first, let's get a check on how the markets fared here in Seoul today. Both major indices ended in the black, despite uncertainty and pressures from the new leadership over in the United States. Korea's benchmark Kospi ended up 0.62% on Wednesday's trading day, closing at 2080.48. The tech-heavy Kostek also ended up settling at 623.68. On the foreign exchange counter, the Korean won strengthened by 4-1, ending the day at 1,158.11 to the greenback. The Korean currency had opened 12.11 stronger from the previous session's close, showing a high degree of volatility. Some analysts attribute the fluctuation to U.S. President Trump's comments on devaluation during a meeting with pharmaceutical company executives on Tuesday. You look at what China is doing. You look at what Japan has done over the years. They, uh, they play the money market. They play the devaluation market. And we sit there like a bunch of dummies. On a similar note, the head of Trump's new National Trade Council said in an interview with the Financial Times that Germany is using a grossly undervalued euro to exploit the U.S. and its EU partners. Some welcome news for the Korean economy, as the latest data shows that exports posted double-digit growth for the first time since 2013. The government says it will work to continue that momentum in trade while also unveiling its plans to support the rapidly growing service sector. Our Shin Seven reports. A surprise improvement on Korea's export front. For the first time in 33 months, exports have expanded for three straight months. It's also the first time in four years that Korea's outbound shipments have logged a double-digit growth. Exports rose 11.2 percent in January from last year on the back of better sales of semiconductors and petrochemicals. Shipments rose to over 40.3 billion U.S. dollars last month, up from the 36 billion tallied a year ago. Imports, too, grew, posting an 18.6 percent rise on year, bringing the country's trade surplus to $3.2 billion, the 60th consecutive month with a surplus on record. Speaking about this rebound on the trade front in a meeting on Wednesday, Finance Minister attributed the recovery momentum to a boost in facilities investment. He also promised to help uphold the robust figures. For local firms doing business overseas, the government will put all-out efforts to help them continue to win more contracts and solidify their position in the global market. Also during the meeting, Minister Yu unfolded the government's plan to boost the country's service sector, doubling its spending on research and development to some four billion U.S. dollars over the next five years. And with the advent of the fourth industrial revolution, the government says it will work to utilize new growth engines like the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence and boost productivity in the manufacturing industry. This plan could in turn work to reduce Korea's reliance on the manufacturing sector, long consider the engine for growth, and place more weight on the country's service sector. With this, the government said it hopes to boost its ratio of R&D investment in the service sector from the 8.6 percent logged last year to 13 percent by 2021. Shin Semin, Business Daily. And on the back of stronger exports, facilities investment rose, but it wasn't enough to push up output across all industries in Korea as consumption remained sluggish. Data released by Statistics Korea shows that production across all sectors in December last year remained at the same level compared to the previous month. Industrial output dropped by half a percent after returning to positive growth in the previous month. Facilities investment jumped almost 3.5% from a month ago, but retail sales declined 1.2%. 
Consumer prices here in Korea have been on a steady rise, but the cost of everyday goods has surged, troubling a lot of households. To tell us more about this and what to expect in terms of overall price trends, our Kim Min-ji joins us in the studio today. Hi, Minji. Hi, Ji. All right, so we're a month into the new year now, and prices keep on rising. Yes, there had been hopes that the price rise would taper off following the Lunar New Year holiday, which was this past weekend. But it looks now the prices are poised to inch up for some time. Korea's consumer prices rose 1% in 2016, accelerating from 0.7% the year before. The prices of groceries that go on the dinner table rose to the highest level in six years. The index for fresh foods was at 106.49, up 6.5 percent on year. In fact, prices of daily necessities, utility fees and vegetables have all been skyrocketing, putting a burden on the average consumer. As of Tuesday, prices of radish came to almost $2.20, up 40 percent from a year ago. A kilogram of carrots cost 135 percent more than last year. I don't come out often, but when I buy a box of tangerines, for example, I can tell the price is roughly doubled. If I came out thinking to spend about $200, I'd end up having to spend $300 or even $400. I can feel the hefty price increase. Vegetables, beef, they've all gone up, and it's putting a burden on my shoulders. I usually do the grocery shopping for our six family members, and those expenses take up a large portion of our overall spending. What's worrisome is that the higher prices are also weighing on the already dampened consumer sentiment. Korea's consumer sentiment index came to 93.3 in January, falling for three consecutive months and sitting at the lowest level since the global financial crisis in 2009. So, Mindy, what are some of the underlying factors that have contributed to this rising consumer prices? Well, we've talked a lot about egg prices recently. Um, the country was hit by uh, hit hard by the worst ever outbreak of bird flu, which led to the culling of over 30 million birds. That in turn led to a price surge of eggs, and the country had to bring in imported eggs to curb rising prices. A tray of 30 had been in the 9,001 range, or about $8 for almost three weeks, but it's now back to the 8,000 range. On top of that, hot summer conditions led to an overall surge in prices of agricultural goods. Now, what's worrisome is that the income is not growing at the same pace. While income growth remains stagnant, the cost of living is rising. Figures show the income of two-people households as of the third quarter last year rose just 0.65 percent. Income is not rising and employment conditions are gloomy, being weighed down by corporate restructuring. Consumers feel the burden of paying back household debt, and with rising prices, it's a burden for them. Adding in the ongoing political turmoil, consumer sentiment will continue to worsen. So with all these problems, are there measures being adopted at the government level to tackle rising prices? I mean, the government did hold talks about this recently, right? Yes, the uh, ministerial levels on um, curbing um, prices for the first time in four years was held back in mid-January. Korea's finance minister, Yui Ro, vowed to stabilize prices of agricultural products and processed foods. He said grocery prices could be stabilized in the coming months due to an expansion and cultivation area for vegetables, which will get to the markets by spring. The government also said it will ensure that 2,000 tons of Napa cabbages, the main ingredient in kimchi, will be supplied before mid-April. But the minister added that prices of refined and processed goods are expected to continue to rise for the time being due to rising um, raw material costs. So what are the prospects ahead? I mean, what needs to be done down the road to curb excessive price hikes? Well, prices are expected to continue to rise for some time. According to a report by the Bank of Korea, commodity prices are forecast to stay on an upward trend in 2017. Now, as a result, Korea, which is highly dependent on energy and commodity imports, will see an overall consumer prices um, subjected to upward pressure. This is changes in global commodity prices affect the country's producer prices, which is a uh, preceding barometer for consumer prices. Also, given the vulnerability of fresh foods to fickle weather conditions, some say the government should consider taking a different approach.
Due to the bad harvest, the supply and demand haven't been equal. So usually this is when the government brings in imports, but the regulations and tariffs are high for agricultural products in order to protect the local industry. The government now needs to step away from this strategy, which will in turn help raise the competitiveness of the sector. For now, experts say the government will need to keep a close eye on the numbers and work to maintain price stability. So I guess for the average consumer, prices will remain a burden on spending for some time. Uh, something to keep our eyes on, right? That's right. Thank you so much for coming in today. My pleasure. The American Chamber of Commerce in Korea says it will actively promote the benefits of the Korea-U.S. free trade agreement at a time when concerns are on the rise about a potential renegotiation of the deal. Speaking at the Amcham office on Wednesday, Chairman James Kim said now is the time to boldly promote the positive effects of the trade pact based on facts. He added that multinational corporations here, as well as Korean firms in the U.S., should work together to inform both governments of the importance of bilateral trade. He further emphasized that the free trade deal has greatly contributed to the economic development of both countries and will continue to do so in the future. The number of Chinese tour groups visiting Korea over the Lunar New Year holiday was nearly half that of last year. According to travel agencies, the number of tour groups from China during the holiday season was down 20 to 50 percent compared to last year. The resort island of Jeju expects a 17 percent decline in the number of Chinese tourists during the holiday that started on Friday and will last for a week. The sharp drop is attributed mainly to soured relations between the two nations. Chinese tourists also tend to travel further to warmer countries during long holidays. Industry insiders say the overall number of tourists from China will remain unchanged or rise, however, as more individual travelers choose Korea as their destination. Now, it's no secret that Korea has one of the world's highest internet penetration rates. And a new survey shows that now nearly 9 of 10 Koreans are users of the World Wide Web. Our Yuna Skim tells us more. Online games and social media. Online banking, social media, reading the news, that's how I use it. Reliance on the World Wide Web continues to grow for Koreans, taking care of everyday chores or just passing the time. In a survey of some 61,000 people in July through October last year, the Ministry of Science, ICT and Future Planning found that 88 percent of Koreans logged on to the Internet, a jump of 3.2 percentage points from the year before. The time they spent online expanded as well. They were spending 14.3 hours per week, up 36 minutes from 2015, which averages out to about two hours per day. As online shopping, social media, messaging, banking and cloud service usage all edged up. Close to, if not all, surveyed in their teens, 20s, 30s and 40s were logged online. 95 percent of those in their 50s were online. They were in their 20s when the earliest form of the Internet was introduced. Most notably, one in two people in their 60s and older were also users of the World Wide Web. In fact, that statistic represents a 12-point increase from the year before, which is a growth spurt nearly quadruple that of the overall average. I log on to see what my friends shared on Facebook. I find good books and things interesting to me. And more and more are accessing the online world via smartphone. One in three of those 65 years and older are, while the nationwide average, excluding children under six, is at a whopping 85 percent. On the other hand, the ratio of people who own personal computers is dropping. Only 75.3 percent of households owned a desktop or laptop last year, a fall from 78.2 percent from two years earlier. Eunice Kim, Business Daily.
And that does it for today. But we'll be back tomorrow at the same time, same place with more of the day's top business news. So don't forget to tune in then. Thanks for watching and see you soon.